you guys can go ahead and it does. Good morning. Thank you, Jerry Seiler, for that. We're having some problems with our Zoom uh, video, and I got a text that it's a, it's a, a Zoom-wide issue. It's not just us. Uh, Zoom is having a problem this morning. There have been so many churches that have gone to the Zoom platform that uh, I'm, I'm surprised this is the first time we've had some problems. So uh, perhaps it'll resolve itself uh, before the end of the service. We're going to continue to try to connect through Zoom, but otherwise, uh, welcome to our service this morning. This is the sixth Sunday in Easter. We're just two Sundays away from Pentecost. Uh, a couple of announcements. Council has a Zoom meeting at 7 o'clock uh, this coming Tuesday night, so don't forget to join us. We have a lot of issues we need to uh, discuss in terms of this county going to the yellow phase. Uh, so we have a lot of things to talk about. So council meeting Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Trinity Stable will be in operation Wednesday night at 5 o'clock. If you know anybody who needs the items that Trinity's Table gives out, you know, get that word out. We, we have a, Alicia Masico has done a great job uh, tweaking the uh, Facebook page for Trinity's Table. And they've put together a really nice, uh, nice addition to that. So if you know anybody that needs to come, we're giving out a meal. Plus then we're pre-packaging up all of the items that we give away for Trinity's Table. And we've had a number of donations and thank you to everybody who's donated and keep the donations 
coming because this is the one ministry that we're able to do uh, and we're going to continue to do it throughout the months to come. Uh, they've canceled the St. Barnabas uh, summer program this year, so uh, we usually participate with Christ Lutheran Church in Duncannon to provide meals, uh, but they've canceled that program this year, but they are still accepting uh, donations. That's a really important program that, that financially it uh, struggles every year, so consider uh, St. Barnabas Center when you're thinking about uh, places that you can uh, give a donation in these, in these months to come. Uh, we are doing a children's Zoom session starting at 4, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, I, I don't know how long it's going to go. We've got some things planned uh, for that. But if you know any kids that would want to uh, participate, join us at 4 o'clock. The information for that was sent out uh, this morning, I believe, or last night. Uh, the password and the ID uh, information for, uh, for, the, for the children's Zoom session. So... Uh, join us. And I think was something else posted? Was there a story that was posted? I'm looking at Mary Ann Moran. There was? Right. So there was another on our Facebook page. So uh, let's see. Birthdays. Birthdays that I know of. Let's see here. Kelly Cropper and Patty Snover have birthdays on the 22nd this week. And then Christy Sauerman on the 25th. I'm going to go to the end of the month. Uh, Christy Sauerman, Joe Morgan, and Andrea, Andrea Snedeker. On the 26th, Laura Doyle on the 28th, and Miranda Conrad, God bless you, also on the 8th, and Paul Shuey on the 31st. So if we missed any birthdays, happy birthday to you. Um, any anniversaries out there, you can text my wife on Facebook, and she'll let me know if there's any anniversaries that we should announce. Um, graduates, we need information about graduates. I know of three. Um, uh, let's see, um, uh, Jonathan Sims yeah. graduated from um, uh, Belmont College. Uh, Caitlin McKenney graduates from Cedar. Cedar Cliff High School. Um, and of course, I know that Anna Sanchez just today will graduate from uh, Penn State Hershey Medical Center. Uh, they're doing a virtual graduation for them. So she is now Dr. Anna Sanchez. So uh, many congratulations to Anna and uh, her family. Um, she begins her residency at Lancaster General Hospital on June 8th. So uh, if you are friends with Anna on Facebook or, or yet you want to send her a text or a congratulations, send her a card, it's quite an accomplishment, uh, her graduation from Penn State Medical Center. Um, Penn State Hershey Medical Center. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's all of the announcements that I am aware of. Don't forget on June, June ice cream, June 7th, instead of the picnic that we usually would have, we're doing a drive-by ice cream event. You know, the Trinitarian is on the uh, church's website. So you can download that. That gets sent to you by email as well every week. So as does the bulletin, which I hope that you have downloaded that uh, so that you can follow along with us today. Um, gosh darn it, there was another graduate that I cannot remember. Brooke. Oh, Brooke, Brooke Webster. Right, thank you. Brooke Webster graduates also. Um, so anything else before we start? We have the band. Uh, you already heard Jerry Siler, Mary Ann Moran is here to sing. Uh, uh, Eddie Conrad's playing guitar. Uh, uh, Dan, Dan Klinger, that's his name, is playing fiddle. Dwayne McKenney's playing guitar. Teresa Paul Heber, of course, is with us. Uh, Sue Siler is here for uh, uh, moral support. And uh, um, let's see, uh, Rick Bowder's back there. He's reading the lessons for us today. And of course, my wife's running the camera. So. Uh, we begin this Easter season with Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is, is risen, risen indeed, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the words of St. John. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment just to reflect on our actions this week, the ways we've uh, disappointed each other, the way we disappointed God. We haven't uh, uh, spoken out about our faith as we should. Let's just take a moment. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going to sing our opening hymn, You Are Holy, and we're going to do it twice, twice two times. Help 
save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 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 And we'll pray the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're grateful to have Rick Bowder here, one of our council members, uh, to read the lessons this morning. The first reading is from the book of Acts, 17th chapter. Paul stood in front of Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city, looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown. This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity himself is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of his own giving assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm will be, will be read responsibly. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has stepped us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, has tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net and you laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fat bones with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I call out to God with my mouth and praise the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer nor withheld unfailing love from me. The second reading is from the first book of Peter, third chapter. Who will harm you if you are eager, eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. 
keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons who were saved through the water. And baptism, which this preconfigured, now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, and as the right hand of the Father, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rick. We speak the gospel acclamation together. Please join me. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphan. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You know, one thing I've learned as a pastor is sometimes your best sermon or your best argument falls on deaf ears. And this is true for Paul. Here in the city of Athens, when he's brought to the Areopagus, 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 I don't know how you That's Rick, he did it right. Rick, yeah, Rick said it right, I said it wrong. Uh, in, in our reading from Acts 17, Perhaps it's the opening line, Paul didn't really set himself up, it's almost dooming him, but he says, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. Perhaps you can hear a hint of sarcasm in his voice. Perhaps he's just stating the facts as he sees it. There in the city of Athens, you see there are, or had been, or maybe currently at that time, 30,000 statues uh, or shrines to gods in the city of Athens. And yet even within this city that is replete with gods, there's one that catches Paul's attention. He finds a shrine to an unknown god. And Paul says, in essence, I know it doesn't say this, but I think this is what Paul is trying to say. He says, I see how religious you are. You even hedge your bets by erecting a shrine to an unknown god among you. Tell me, how do you worship something that has no name and no identity? Now I need to emphasize the importance of Paul's sermon. He's on trial. This is a dangerous moment for Paul. He was alone. His buddies Timothy and Silas were probably still trying to get from Berea uh, down to Athens. It's quite a distance for them to travel. What I'm amazed about with Paul and his sermon is he's not just merely defending himself. He's taking time 
to use his rhetorical skills to challenge the Greek worldview. It's all about opportunity. Amen? So, is Paul insulting his audience? That would seem a bit dangerous, we would say. But he doesn't pause often. He just continues. He says, so let me tell you about this God you do not know, but who I know very well. In the art of persuasive speech, Paul's using a strategy many Athenians could relate to, and that is, he's, since they're in the presence of so many gods, small g gods, uh, Paul launches into his defense from a place they can relate to. Uh, the God that Paul knows is perhaps, unbeknownst to them, their unknown God among them. This God that Paul knows is not unknown to him, he argues. It is the God who made the world, who made everything in it. It is the Lord of heaven and earth. This God, Paul says, does not need a shrine. It doesn't need a temple made by human hands. Uh, the God who created everything needs nothing that man has to offer. Nothing that man could build. Right? God needs nothing from us but our love and obedience. But imagine being in that tribunal with Paul. The Areopagus is a rock outcropping that they would have uh, religious uh, matters were discussed, or in this case, not just discussed, but having a trial for Paul. So the Greeks have surrounded themselves with so many gods, so many statues, so many temples, all built to appease these gods, and they have one to an unknown God. And this uh, statue to an unknown God is the result of a kind of a strange ritual. Uh, during, during an outbreak of the plague, they uh, determined that uh, they weren't able to appease God because the plague kept going. So somebody came up with this idea to let loose some hungry sheep throughout the city of Athens. And wherever those sheep would lie down, they must be lying down in the presence of an unseen God, and so they would sacrifice that sheep to that unseen God, and then they would build, a, they would erect a statue to an unknown God, hoping to appease that God, that the plague would then be abated. How was that? How did I do? Okay. And it worked, right? The plague began to abate, so they must have figured, well, we got the right God, we just don't know which God it is. And here is this, Israelite, Paul, he is a Roman citizen, he, but he's still an outsider, telling them that there is only one God, and the one God that Paul knows could be this unknown God amongst them. Now, who were the gods of the Greeks? Well, I'm not going to list all 30,000 of them, but, you know, they had gods like Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty. They had Apollo, the god of music and the arts. Ares, the god of war, Artemis, the god of wilderness, Athena, the god of wisdom, Dionysus, the god of wine, Eros, the god of love. They had sky gods, they had agricultural gods, they had sleep gods, they had health gods. The list was quite long. Nothing was left to chance, right? They had determined not to cast their fates to the winds. So why was Paul even in this, this situation, we ask? Well, we know Paul, here in the 17th chapter of Acts, well, first of all, we know Paul was called to be uh, an apostle to the Gentiles and to the Jews, but primarily the Gentiles. And here he's on his second missionary journey in the 17th chapter of Acts, and he had been in the city of Thessalonica, and he had preached in the synagogue like Paul would do, and some Jews were converted, and, and a few Greeks as well. But there was a, a group of Jews in Thessalonica who didn't, think Paul should be there preaching in the synagogue, so they were after Paul. So he steals away at night with Silas, and they go on to Berea. Berea is in northern Greece. It's near uh, Macedonia. Paul again goes into one of the synagogues in Berea. He's preaching. Uh, some of the Jews are converted, some Gentiles as well. Uh, and here come this group of rabble-rousers from Thessalonica, Thessalonica coming to Berea, causing more problems, so Paul steals away and goes to the city of Athens. And it's a pretty far trip from Berea to Athens. Um, so Paul has this chance to 
when he gets to the city to debate with some of the Stoic philosophers, but it gets him into trouble, and here he is on trial. Um, and what's interesting about the people in Athens, Luke tells us in chapter uh, 21, before what we have in our, in our lessons in, in the uh, text that we have from Acts, says that the, the Athenians were very interested. In fact, they only liked to talk about and debate things that were new. So here's Paul. He certainly has something new to tell them. So, you know, perhaps that's why they are giving him a hearing. And since he's on trial here at the Arab, Areopagus, uh, he's using his best rhetorical abilities. In fact, he's, he's quoting one of the most beloved poems uh, currently going around in the city of Athens. Paul says, In this God that I am preaching to you about, in this God who created all things, heaven and earth, the seasons, in this God we live and move and have our being. And then to make his point, he quotes this uh, poem, uh, and he says, For we too are his offspring. For we too are his offspring. It's a quote from the poet Aratus, from his poem, uh, Foenomena, Foenomena, uh, it's a poem about Zeus. Zeus is the king of all gods. Zeus is the sky and the, the thunder god. Uh, he rules from Mount Olympus, right? And the poem goes in part, let us begin with Zeus, whom we mortals never leave unspoken. Everywhere, everyone is indebted to Zeus, for we are indeed his offspring. So according to the Greeks, Zeus is omnipotent. All are the offspring of Zeus. Paul uses this line from this poem to launch to his concluding point. We are God's offspring for which we followers have and owe our life and our actions and everything. We do not think God has been captured in images of gold or silver or even stone, any statue or shrine. All of these statues around you mean nothing to God. What matters is repentance. The righteousness of man will be judged through Jesus Christ, whom God has raised from the dead. This God, the creator of all things, has been made known to us through Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. So Paul has reached this dramatic conclusion. Jesus is the resurrection the visible incarnation of God, the one who will judge all people. It's a new idea, right? This would be foreign to the people in Athens. And yet Paul's implying that this isn't foreign at all. Rather, it's, it, it's what points you to the light. These pagan cultures, these other pagan gods, they only point you to darkness. So Paul's given his best sermon, mixing together Athenian philosophy and poetry, using his context and his content to craft this remarkable sermon. And in fact, we may only have a part of this sermon, for can we believe that Paul would have been able to preach such a wonderful sermon from the cuff? Maybe he could have, perhaps, but Paul achieved his intent. Now, does he have thousands that follow him from this sermon? No, he gets a few who, uh, in fact, want to give him a second hearing, but I believe Paul flees Athens before anything else uh, really happens to him. But what can we say about Paul? I think what we can say is this. His sermon is filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul has preached the spirit of truth as he has come to know Jesus Christ. And just as John says in this second part of uh, the 14th chapter of John that we have in our gospel lesson today. Uh, many will not, many cannot receive this spirit of truth. But it's this very truth, this very spirit that strengthens Paul's, the spirit of truth that strengthens Paul. It, 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 it provides him his words and his teachings. You know, Jesus is the one giving him the spirit uh, that allows Paul to continue even in the face of such trials and tribulation. Imagine how Christ's words, imagine how the Holy Spirit strengthens us in these troubling times. 
I know many want this whole situation just to go away, just to be done. Let's get back to normal. I just don't know how to define that word normal anymore. This coming week, many of the surrounding counties, including Cumberland County, is going to be going from red to yellow in this phase of being able to interact, uh, businesses to open, that kind of thing. This will now present some challenges for our council, for our members, for every church, their council, their members, their ministries, right? Um, if this initial pandemic made our hearts troubled, I'm here to tell you returning to some sense of normal within the church, well, that's troubling to me as well. Uh, but we all have the good news of the gospel spoken directly to us from Jesus Christ. Jesus says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Just as Jesus was trying to comfort his disciples uh, and give them hope in a troubling situation, Jesus is doing the same for you and me. Today in John 14, Jesus continues that preaching, uh, his lessons. If you love me, you will attend to my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, the Spirit of Truth. Look, over the next couple of weeks and months, we're going to have to listen to many voices. Doctors, infectious disease experts, scientists, right? It will be a troubling but also informative time, a time where we all perhaps become experts on areas such as infection mitigation and testing protocols and learning the ways in which all viruses spread if we haven't already become experts in such mm -hmm. matters? Are we going to be able to agree on these issues? Probably not. Initially, we're going to have many opinions about this virus, just as we have had many opinions. Um, many are going to differ on how we should allow this virus to continue to affect our lives. So now is the time that we should be hungry for the word of God, to immerse ourselves in this scripture, trusting that Jesus will not leave us orphaned. And that word orphaned is an interesting word. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. It means, you know, to be alone or to be isolated or to feel abandoned. Jesus promises that those who continue to hold dear the teachings of Jesus and continue in his love, then through the Holy Spirit, Jesus will walk with us will be with us, will comfort us, will never abandon us. So how do we hold dear the teachings of Jesus? Well, we continue to love God, we continue to love our neighbors. These times are going to call for us to do what the court of Areopagus did for Paul. They listened intently. They were open to new teachings. They allowed the Spirit to move among and within them. They opened their ears and they listened to what Paul and ultimately God was saying to them. You know, life is going to leave us feeling alone and abandoned and, and desolate sometimes. People may even abandon us, but God does not abandon us. God's promises remain steadfast and true. And when we dwell in his teachings, when we make it a daily part of our relationship with Jesus, well, then we know that the Father is in us, the love of Jesus abides with us, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will be our guide. And we will not feel alone or abandoned. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let me find out where we are. We are going to sing the hymn of the day. Goodness is stronger than evil. Uh, I forgot to ask, how many? Twice. Twice? We're going to sing it two times.
Our service continues with the Nicene Creed. Let us profess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. Will you please say it with me? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church, as your followers, to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all the people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed. And speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially our families here at Trinity Lutheran Church, especially those who have family members in health care, who are essential workers, and our shut-ins. Christine Spradlin, Betty Better, Sam Leach, Liz Roach, Clara Kohler, Jim Carl, Don and Mary Ann Howe, Chris Larthy, all our emergency responders and hospital personnel, Families who've been affected directly by COVID-19, Nancy Schreckler, Keith Quigley, Michelle Patterson Morishock, as she awaits the birth of her baby, and Anna Sanchez, as she begins her new career as a doctor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises, to work for justice, Advocate for, the, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time for the Lord's Prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us sing the prayer Jesus taught us. We include every week the version of the Lord's Prayer that we've been singing. I just encourage you to sing along.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Finally, the God of all grace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't go anywhere yet. We get two more songs. We're going to sing, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. I'll give you a couple of uh, final uh, words of uh, wisdom, and then uh, we'll have the postlude. So, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Sue's just here because Sue can be here. So um, don't forget, in the prayer garden, if it's not raining, uh, I'll be handing out the uh, wafer of communion uh, from our reserved wafer, uh, our re reserved uh, host. Uh, and that'll be from 12 to 12.30. If you're out there early, I'll be out. Uh, what time is it? Uh, quarter of, I'll be out in a couple of minutes. So um, otherwise... Council meets this week, 7 o'clock on Zoom. Kids, don't forget, 4 o'clock, we're going to be Zooming. Um, and uh, we're going to have a puppet show. We're going to have a story as well. So join us for that. Otherwise, uh, wash your hands, use your hand sanitizer, stay six feet away from one another. and uh, Practice kindness. What's that? Practice kindness. Oh, practice kindness. And uh, immerse yourself in God's Word. Be hungry for the so Word. She's not just a camera she, she, she provides, uh, Direct. Direct. she is the producer of, the producer. yeah, yeah, so, God bless, uh, Mary Ann, you're doing the post loop? Who's doing the post loop? Yeah. They're all doing the post loop, there we go. Yeah. 